Welcome back. Hugh Taylor is with me here in the studio. We've had a look at some horses to follow. We're going to have a look now at some, some interesting angles. We've had very, very testing conditions. How testing? How soft? How heavy has it been? Well, let's just remind ourselves first of all, put it in a little recent historical context. This is the number of soft or heavy ground races run by this time, by the end of July, over the last few years. And it's been an extraordinary year. Yeah, this is, this is on the flat um, for each of the last five years. And this is the going as described by race form which means after the race they've looked at the times Based they've, the times, they've yeah. made their own going allowances so it's I would say it's probably more reliable mm. than the official goings. Even on the official goings you probably have a similar number. I'm sure it would year, be very yeah. similar on the official goings but you see back in 2008 it was quite a wet summer and we had by most standards a lot of heavy ground yep. races over 200 not nowhere near as many in the last three years and look at how many we've had in already in 2012 just a, a, an extraordinary number mm. and I'm sure there's lots of trainers pulling their hair out Absolutely. with it um, so you know it's a start point because as I say I've, I've struggled very very badly and uh, uh, the, in recent weeks with this ground and I'm sure I'm not the only one and um, yeah, it does tell a tale, doesn't it? It the, does. The, the it, it, it has been extraordinary, and, and there, there is surely going to be a backlog of horses who, you know, who have been waiting for their, their their ground, who are all going to be looking for opportunities at the same time, assuming it, assuming yeah. it ever does dry out. The difficulty we're going to find as punters is trying to decide which horses are just out of form and which mm. have just not handled the ground, because yeah. it can, if a horse is out of form. A fast ground is out, out of form, it's going to run badly on soft ground. If a horse yeah. doesn't handle soft ground, it's going to run badly. And yeah. decide dis, that's going to be the yeah. problem that punters face if the ground does yeah. dry up, which some people seem and to be, think it's be, going to. There'll be fast ground horses coming back who you give a chance to. And actually, the, 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 their, their whole schedule is shot because they should have been running in June and July and yeah. they won't get to run until August. <laughs> it's a minefield. It's a minefield. Uh, uh, we, we, we hope that we might have found an angle or two. Uh, let's have a look at some sire stats. Now, uh, there, there's various ways of looking at statistics. One would be the strength. Rate, but yeah. we're looking at what some people would know as the, the sort of the A and E yeah. figures. Just just explain what right. we're looking at here. I, d I don't like using level states profit or loss in, in situations like this because one big price winner yep. can completely skew it. I, I do explain this most weeks. We do this, but there's always new viewers tuning in, so I think it's important to explain it every time. The actual over expected. Basically, if you look at the SP of every horse that runs, say for these sires on here, you can work out how many wins they should have had by predicted by the market. For instance, two to one shots should win one in three times. So you'd expect 0.33 wins. Um, and they, then you're going to get a figure that's either bigger or, or smaller than one. Anything over one suggests that it's this- It's effectively a positive. That it's yeah. a positive. Anything over one, it's happening more times than the market suggests it should. So, so I picked a figure out, of two for Whipper there is, is pretty, it, yeah, the, now the top two are both from relatively small samples. Mm -hmm. I would say that, mm -hmm. which is which is can still slightly skew them. But I yeah. definitely think Whipper and Doyon perhaps even more. If you if you look at some of the um, some of the horses that have been mopping up in 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 the mud this year, horses like Prince of Sorrento that regular viewers will be aware of, and Tillsworth Glen Boys, another mudlark, and Quiz Mistress. There's loads of of Doyons who've been doing really well, which is counterintuitive really because Doyon's best form yeah. himself was on decent ground but there, I, I'm sure there's enough evidence to suggest that they a lot of them are going very well on soft ground. Whipper again has plenty of horses who've done really well this year in, in the mud and he is a horse who went very well on soft ground himself. So they're the two from from smaller sample bases admittedly. Pivotal from a massive sample base has, has long been a, a sire who's thrown and this is fairly well known thrown mm. horses who he, he has a few that a better on fast ground, Absolutely. but there's, there's a lot more he, that... He'd be one of those that many people with a little understanding would say, well, Pivotal's going soft, it's yeah. just one of those. Yeah, I think, I think that's fair to say, yeah. But most of the size that you can see on this list, I would see anything over about 0 0.9, because you bear in mind the, yep. the over round in the Absolutely. betting market yeah. as well. Anything over about 0 0.9, and you would say, yes, the, the evidence is that enough of their horses go well on soft ground mm. to be interesting. So all those horses on that list, I would say, are reasonably positive um right down to right down to galileo, galileo and, and halling yes they're they're, okay. they're all i would say i'll be more positive than negative okay. just looking at uh, whipper by the way he's, he's good to firm stats for because he are poor um, right a little bit mm. not not terrible but mm -hmm. you know his strike rate drops and his ae goes mm. goes go, go, goes down to a negative as well uh, so 
there must be a flip side, and these these are, these are sires which which aren't so yeah, good. Yeah, so. these are sires that perhaps you might want to keep an eye on for horses that have been running not so well on soft ground if the ground does dry up. The bottom two, I would say, I've included them. They're, they're from tiny, tiny samples, but. I think that's partly because even the trainers realise that they're, they're US breds and they're, they're not going to go on soft ground and, and most of them haven't. But there are some high quality sires in this list who have fairly ordinary records in terms of actual over expected on soft or heavy ground. Cape Cross is an outstanding sire, um, not so great on, on soft ground overall. Selkirk is a sire who will surprise many people because he has a reputation of being, a soft, of being an influence for soft ground horses and indeed he does get quite a few that go well but overall I think his reputation exceeds the actual results in terms mm. of soft ground performance of his progeny. Uh, Shamadal's a terrific sire whose soft ground results haven't yet lived up to um, his overall billing. Oasis Dream and Dan Silly are two that I would definitely note um, because they're again sires who get lots and lots of winners but they haven't tended to be quite such good value on soft ground. Yeah and we're using this as a lead. There will be exceptions for all Absolutely. sizes and yeah. dams, aren't there? But, but uh, very, very interesting. And, and of course, because we're looking at actual wins versus expected wins based on SPs, we're, look, we're hopefully generating a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a. a That's the thing. Is, we, we're talking about value here, yeah. and those those figures show how the horses have performed compared with market expectations. Okay, and uh, let's see if we can uh, just crunch another stat and do, do have a little look by country so this is this is the little suffix that would appear next yeah. to the horse's name so if it's gb it doesn't appear in the british press but if it's irish bread it will and if it's french bread and so on and so on um french tops the yeah. list obviously none of these are showing a profit but you wouldn't expect to to show a profit backing um a whole a, a whole country blind, a whole country yeah. breeding horses blindly yeah. but um the french horses perhaps not surprisingly have, have if you had to best. guess you'd, you'd probably say french and irish British than American, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, I, th I thought the Irish might be higher. Than, yeah. And the German breads, I, I haven't included this in, but they weren't anything to write home about, which right. surprised me. I would have thought they would have done really well, but n not the case. They were certainly no better than third in that, in that table. The interesting one at the bottom, the US breads. Mm. Um, this is interesting. We were talking off air um, a few moments ago about um, uh, the situation at Southern where we sometimes say, this, somebody asked me a question in an email about this a, a, yeah. a week or two ago, about how do American, uh, how do soft ground horses, do you need soft ground yeah. horses on fibre sand? And while some soft ground horses certainly do go well at, at Southern, I think the fact that US breads tend to go so poorly on soft ground overall, yeah, on um, turf. whereas they have an outstanding yeah. record at Southern, kind of that's really interesting. It breaks angle, down actually. the correlation yeah. a little yeah. bit, I think, I think between yeah. those two, two so, factors. So it doesn't completely destroy it. But no, I think no. It so we, we think of Southall as, as uh, certainly as different to the, uh, to, to the polytrack surface sure. of, of, as, as, mm. a, as a deeper and slower surface yeah. seems to be the, the consider. Mm. However, for some reason, a, a dirt bred horse thrives on that surface. Or, or, yeah, and this or has been the case. Well. This has been the case yeah. for quite a long time. And, and you see it over, I think there were probably at least three US breads won yesterday yeah, at Sutherland isn't it? it's, and it's, it's been happening for a long time and I've talked about it and it's not changed it, me yeah. talking about it on this yeah. program, I've talked about it several times. Um, but going back to the soft ground thing, if you're looking in, as the ground, if the ground does dry up, some of these US breads mm. are going to show better form I think um, mm. that have perhaps been flopping in the mud. Mm. Um, so that's why, that's why I, I show that. Mm. There, there, there's some US, I think probably is Dubai destination a US bread? I think he is. He's, he's going all right on soft ground. But there's, there's a few that, um, uh, that are certainly going to show better form as the yeah. ground dries up. Yeah. No, and we're generalising a little, a little bit, but we're, we, we, are looking, we are looking for trends there. Just to, just to close this section, as it were, some, I, I've sometimes spoken to some people, one or two senior odds compilers, for example, who say ground is, is, is the number one thing. Some trainers say it's the number one thing. Others say you know, other, other, other factors are more important. How big a factor is it when, when you're sitting down to look at a race? How big a factor is, is, is the going? Is it something that helps you to rule horses out if, they, if they, they've shown they don't act on the ground? It is a big factor. The, the, the problem with at the moment is there's so many different variations, variations of, of soft ground around. Mm. I mean, you, you look at the, the July Cup winner Mason, mm. who, I mean, to me, that was as testing as, 
Oh, visually, it looked really, really bad at Newmarket, didn't it? It looked mm. heavy ground, but but he seemingly didn't handle the heavy ground he'd encountered at Newcastle in his previous start. Admittedly, he was one off the rail that day, and that mm. you needed to be right on the rail, but he still didn't really mm. show as much as you would expect a July Cup winner to show. Well, uh, Paul Hennigan talked about it, said you know, Newcastle was almost unraceable, whereas, yeah. where, as, at Newcastle, rather, mm. whereas at Newmarket, he said it felt almost like fast ground. He mm. coped with it so well, and, and as you say, there are... And it's complicated so as well by, by the it? fact that we've got so many different soil types yeah. in our race courses and <laughs> soft at one course isn't necessarily soft the same. Soft is wet and you go through it and in other courses it's clay and you're Yeah, absolutely. You're so, walk, so you're not necessarily comparing like with like uh, yeah. all, all the way across the board. Yeah. <laughs> all, all sent to try us. Yeah, absolutely. Get through it. We're going to take a short break. More to come after this.